So when it comes to the finish, there's a couple of really key fundamental things that need to be done. And there are two things that we see all the time that kill distance. So in this video, we take a look at one of the a clip from one of our free workshops and we break it down with Robert Harding. So check it out. So you're going to look at maximizing the radius of the discus. So now you look at the role of the lower body. If you keep the heel elevated, you can see here how Harding's heel is. We're gonna look at that. So we'll look at Robert Harding. He's one of my favorite discus throwers, even though he's a non-reverse. And we'll talk about we talk about the non-reverse. And on that checklist, I'll bring that up. Okay. So you're gonna notice uh, we'll go through and we'll look at his six pillars. I'll just play it so we can get it to that too. So this is again how we look at the throw. We're training each position. This is why we're talking about the finish because we have to learn the specific positions and put it together into the throw. So now is where you see Harding goes into the power position. So you're gonna notice we always are thinking upper body, lower body as we're getting into the delivery because we have that sequence. So if the sequence gets slightly off, it compromises efficiency, you're gonna lose power. And remember, the ultimate thing is it's, it's this convergence of force, right? We want the lower body, we want the upper body, and we want everything going into the throw. And a lot of times, you have forces diverging, and that's why our athletes are gonna have a hard time picking up things, okay? So what you're gonna notice here, again, what we talk about is opening the block arm out, right? And so a lot of times people say, open it this way, but if you do that, you're gonna have, most of your athletes, in our opinion, are gonna have a tendency to open the shoulder. You wanna open the arm out, so everything, the path is always this way, which means the shoulder follows that way too. So you're gonna look at, maximizing the radius of the discus. So now you look at the role of the lower body. If you keep the heel elevated, you can see here how Harding's heel is really elevated, it never comes down from that point, which creates a really fast rotational axis. And he's consciously trying to push the knee and the hip as well. So that's why that heel never comes down. And now you're gonna see as he comes through, he's gonna be able to smash it. And, and this is one of the things you can kind of see. You can see the whole bottom of the shoe because he's pushed everything forward. You're going to see the hips are pretty much, or the shoulders are pretty much on top of the hips. And now you really see how he maximizes the radius. This is what you see elite discus throwers all doing in common. We, if we showed you all the top 10 guys, they're all out here because maximizing that radius, especially at the distances these guys throw, I think it's two centimeters will add up to roughly uh, nine feet, right? So if you can extend your radius this much at this level, that's nine more feet in distance. So flying the discus and all that kind of stuff, that's additional things, but we're going to talk about some of those positions but it makes a huge difference in these details, make all the difference in the world. When you look at that and you're looking pillar six, we want the shoulders level, like we said, on top of the hips, we're looking at engaging that block arm. So we stop it at the side. A lot of times throwers are taught to pull that arm down and back. It has to stop in front. When you teach athletes to pull back, shoulder pulls back. You're gonna lose power and you're gonna notice that these elite throwers watch as they come all the way through you're gonna see that that arm stays there until that, dis even when the discus goes, you'll see it as it comes through. You'll see right there, see how the block arm stays there? The discus is gone, you've seen it, he's following through. The whole body has moved, you don't see the shoulder going back, he's following through. Block arm is stopped at the side of the body. So the big don'ts that you guys wanna make sure that don't happen in your rotational throw is you don't wanna jump, right? Discus has to be horizontal. Again, the implements out here, you're trying to pull it across. If you lift like you would in the shot, that has a tendency to happen sometimes. Your rotational shot putters will start shot putting the discus and vice versa. So you don't wanna jump, you wanna be extremely horizontal. The lift comes through the delivery hip, not from jumping. As soon as you go vertical, you can't go vertical and turn I mean, you can, but you're losing ground force and you're losing distance. Pulling the block shoulder back and jumping, those are the two things that will absolutely kill the throw.